Dr. Ken here with you again. Lesson 5, Part 3 now. We're up to inductors and resistors in parallel, or L and R in parallel. So when inductance is in parallel with resistance, the current through the inductive branch will lag the applied voltage. Step 1. Step two, the current in the resistive branch will be in phase with the applied voltage. So good old Ohm's law can apply to that. Next, if the inductive branch has no resistance, and I'm pointing out here that's a perfect inductor with no resistance, the current through the inductor will lag by a nice, neat, crisp 90 degrees. But, but, but... If the inductive branch has some resistance, and the reality is most inductors do have a little bit of internal resistance, then the angle will be less than 90 degrees. So we have the pure or perfect inductor, no internal resistance, and we have what we call the practical inductor, which has some internal resistance. So... Here's a little example of 400 hertz, sorry, 400 volts at 50 hertz, and uh, we've got to work out what the current is through the inductor and the current through the resistor. Well, first thing we'd have to work out what the uh, inductive reactance is. So if you take the inductive reactance at 0.25 of a Henry, multiply it by 2 pi frequency, you'll get about 78 ohms. So we can say that the inductor is 78 ohms, the resistor is obviously 100 ohms. So uh, current equals uh, I divided by V. Therefore, nice and simple, we can work out the current through the inductor will simply be 400 divided by 78, which is going to give us about 5.1 amps lagging at 90 degrees. It's important to note that it's lagging at 90 degrees. The current through the resistor, don't even have to pick up your calculator, 400 divided by 100 is going to obviously give us 4 or 4 amps. So the current in the inductor, 4 amps in phase or a phase angle of 0 degrees. Now we can't find uh, the I total. Not easily mathematically, so we're going to have to use a phasor diagram for that. So we go to the next slide, and here's our phasor diagram. We simply do a, in this case, our scale, we better note the scale first, is one division equals one amp, so here's our four amps in phase with the voltage on the horizontal and here's our 5.1 so it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and just a fraction over for 0.1 so 5.1 amps and here's our I total so we simply do a parallelogram or top to tail it doesn't matter which way you do it you get this point here you project it back to the origin and that is the I total so the length of the phasor is the I total and the angle between the phasor and the horizontal is our phase angle. So we can use a mathematical solution to find it if we wanted to. We could simply say I total is the square root of IR squared plus IL squared. So we're just simply looking at the right angle triangle. Or we could have used trigonometry, or we can use trigonometry once we've done that to then find the uh, angle cos to the minus 1 IR divided by I total, IR being the adjacent and I total being the hypotenuse of the triangle, therefore we would use the ratio of cos to work out what the angle is. So from our diagram, we can scale off and we get a 6.5 amps. So the length of the phasor scaled off comes out at 6.5 amps. And from the phasor diagram, 
we can either get our protractor out and measure this or we could use some trigonometry over this side but it comes out at so close to 52 degrees we wouldn't be too worried about that 51.9 or 52 degrees the total impedance remember the <coughs> total current divided into the total voltage will give us the total impedance so our 400 volts divided by I total of 6.5 will give us 61.5 ohms is the total circuit impedance. But what happens when we start to include some inductor resistance? So you can see now we've still got a resistor over here on our diagram to the right. The pink arrow indicates the resistor current, the green arrow indicates the inductor current, and the red is the I total. But you'll notice here we've drawn in an extra little piece of resistance and then we've put a dotted line around it. Okay, because this is a practical inductor. We've drawn the inductance part of it and then we've just put the internal resistance as a separate resistor. The reality is that resistance is actually the resistance of the wire inside the inductor. But we draw it this way so we can clearly see we're dealing with a practical inductor not a pure inductor. So, in a practical circuit of L and R in parallel, its phasor diagram is going to be somewhere a bit less than 90 degrees. So you can see here, we have the resistance, the current through the resistor IR, and we have the actual phaser for the current and instead of being back here at a nice neat 90 degrees it's got a bit of phase angle on it and that's created by this internal part of the circuit having some internal resistance some RL in the circuit. So, we can actually look at this as a separate triangle and the reality is the resistance of the inductor is here and the inductive reactance is here giving us this resultant current through the phaser which gives us a separate angle so it's this resistor that's creating this shift here which is something less than the 90 degrees we would get if it was a perfect inductor. So the result is we end up with our inductor here. We can again parallelogram it or we can top to tail, doesn't matter. And we end up at this point and we project back to the origin and we have a new phase angle something less than 90 degrees and the length of the phaser is the I total so that's the, the reality in a practical circuit that has resistance in series or internally in the inductor itself So this next little section, uh, we're simply just expanding out 
So our worked example 18.3, this is just a mathematical solution. So we have a resistor of 100 ohms is connected in parallel with our 250 millihenry coil and it has an internal resistance of 30 ohms in this case. It's still 400 volts applied to it at 50 hertz and we need to calculate the current in the inductive branch, the phase angle between the voltage and the inductor, the total circuit current, the phase angle between the current and the applied voltage and finally the total circuit impedance. So what are the values we have to play with? We have XL at 78.5 ohms which we got from our previous example of 2 pi FL. We know our current through the resistor is 4 amps. We know our RL, so our resistor in the inductor is 30 ohms. We have a resistor of 100 ohms. Voltage applied 400 volts frequency at 50. So calculate one. Let's carry the inductive branch IL. So this is done by finding the impedance of the RL using Ohm's law. And if you remember, I drew a little right angle triangle on the previous slide. And we're simply using that to calculate the Z. So the Z of the circuit, RL squared, X squared L, and that gives us 30 squared plus 78.5 squared. We take the square root of all of that. And we end up with ZL equals 84.04. Now that's the impedance of the branch itself for the inductor only. Remember the inductor having 30 ohm resistor in series with it. Therefore we can now work out the current because we have the voltage at 400 volts, we have the impedance for ZL. So 400 divided by 84, we get, sorry, by 84, and we get a total IL. So the current is at 48, or sorry, 4.8 amps. The next thing we have to do is calculate the phase angle between the applied voltage and the inductor. So phase angle of the inductor. We know the inductor's impedance, ZL, we worked that out, and its resistance. So we can use inverse cosine to find out the angle. So again, it's a right angle triangle and Z is the hypotenuse and L is the adjacent. So cos to the minus 1 will give us the angle. So that's 30 divided by 84. Cos to the minus 1 gives us a ratio of 0.357. And our calculator should tell us that gives us an angle of 69.1 degrees. And the current is lagging the branch because it's inductive. So we know it's lagging. Next thing we need to do is calculate the total circuit current I total. So we have the branch currents of IR and IL. So we've already found those. So to find the I total, we have to draw a phase diagram of the currents to find I total simply by measuring it on a phase diagram. Remembering we have branch currents now are 4.8 at 69 degrees lagging, that's the one we just worked out up here, and our resistor 4 amps in phase with the voltage, of course it's resistive. So we simply have to draw the phase diagram, and here it is here. So we've drawn our phase diagram, and we first draw in the current for the resistor, then they've top to tailed. We've now put in our IL here. Okay, we've top to tailed it. Um, the reality is, I'll just draw it for you. That uh, current IL.
is actually in there. So that's the current IL. And we've simply moved it across in this direction and we've top to tailed it onto the resistance current. And again, we've drawn its length at 4.8 amps and its angle at 69.1, which for most of us we'd probably draw it at 70. What's important is to get this point here. And again, you can top to tail the way that have done it on this diagram. You could have parallelogrammed it across here. Got the same place. Then once you have got this position, you can then project back in this direction to the origin. Here's our origin. Therefore, the length of this line is the current and the angle to the horizontal is 38 and they should have put a minus in there shouldn't they so we've got a total of 7.3 amps and it's at minus 38.5 or what we would say is at 38 degrees lagging so our answer is scaled off we get 7.3 amps and we get an angle of 35 degrees. Now we can answer question 4 using Ohm's law. We can find out the impedance. Z is equal to the voltage of 400 volts divided by the I total. So we've got the 400 volts that we were told. We've got the current that we've just worked out. We do the math and the total impedance of the circuit is 54 so just to uh, finish off this part, part three of the uh, the lesson, we've just got that phaser diagram built up a little bit bigger, making it a little bit more obvious, and. There's our current top to tail. So again, there's our 4 amps through the resistor, our 4.8 through the inductor at 69 degrees, finding this point, projecting back to get our 7.38 and our 85 degrees.